October 4, 2017 Melbourne, Australia After more than a decade of political wrangling and failed legislative attempts, Australia is poised for a vote that could see it join the growing club of nations that allow same-sex marriage. The decision I assent he taking place in Parliament, at least not yet, or even at the ballot box. Whether Australia finally decides the hot-button social issue, which has defied a political resolution for years, may depend on a globally unique arrangement a postal survey. From September 12 to November 7, Australians can complete and return forms asking them one question should the law be changed to allow SAMA six couples to marry straightforward as that seems the story behind the survey is anything but. Rather, it's an unusual political arrangement that, to many down under, feels out of touch with popular opinion. Polls going back to 2007 show steady majority support for gay marriage. And the process is unfair, gay advocates argue why should their rights be put up for public vote, and an odd one, at that unlike formal referenda, the male survey is voluntary and non-binding, more of a suggestion that Parliament Act, after repeated failures at legislation. But the depth of political infighting and paralysis that has led to the postal survey also highlights many Australians' concerns about politics in the lucky country, a country often considered lucky for gay residents, too. Amid economic anxieties, despite a world-record-breaking quarter-century of growth, some view the so-called plebe survey as one more example of a government that's ineffective and out of touch, the sort of thing you've seen in Britain with the vote for Corbyn, you've seen in the United States with Trump, in France with Macron, and so on. It's basically here, says Ian McAllister, a politics professor at Australian National University in Canberra. There is populist disaffection with the major established political parties and a distrust in their ability to deliver economic performance and sound policies. Political inertia The centre-right government led by Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull has promised to hold the conscience vote on the issue in Parliament if the public votes yes, after results are revealed November 15. 70% of Australians who say they are certain to return the survey back gay marriage, according to an Ipsos poll, meaning Australia could legislate for SAMA six unions before Christmas. If it does, it would join a club of two dozen countries where gay marriage is legal, a club many are surprised Australia DIDNT joined long before. Sydney's annual gay and lesbian Mardi Gras is one of the world's largest pride festivals. In a 2013 Pew Research Center survey, 79% of respondents agreed with the question should society accept homosexuality that's more than in the United States, Brazil, South Africa or Argentina, all of which have now legalized gay marriage. But successive parliaments have voted down change or blocked a vote from even taking place, reflecting deep divisions within the ruling party, and, critics say, the latest symptom of troubled leadership in an era of declining public trust. Professor McAllister says the country HASNT had a leader with consistently high public approval for a decade, fueling political inertia. By and large, they are not willing to take positions on issues, and that's certainly the case with Turnbull and Sama Six marriage, he says. The voter survey arrangement reflects a pathology within the parties, says Graham Moore, a law professor at University of Queensland. They are very sensitive to what you might call vocal minorities, drive. Or says of politicians whom become reluctant to lead amid falling faith in government a government that seems repeatedly hamstrung by issues that critics say should not be so controversial, given public support, or so preoccupying. Those range from the marriage plebe survey, as it has been derisively called, to a commotion over politicians with dual citizenship, which one headline dubbed the world's most ridiculous constitutional crisis, Mr. Turnbull, an urbane ex-investment banker who supports Sama Six marriage, is widely seen as wedded to the public vote out of fear of a backbench revolt that could cost him the job he himself seized in his own party coup. Since 2007, the country has undergone five changes of prime minister. When Turnbull successfully challenged predecessor Tony Abbott for leadership of the Liberal Party two years ago, he promised Conservative colleagues that Australians would get to weigh in on Sama Six marriage, a plan Mr Abbott proposed to relieve tensions between intra-party factions by taking the question out of MPs' hands. After a formal plebiscite proposal was blocked by the Senate last month, the government settled on a postal survey instead, bypassing the need for parliamentary approval. Technically, it is not a ballot, but a collection of statistics about Australians' view of the issue to guide Parliament. Discontent down under for some voters, the complicated workaround is one more example of a deeply frustrating government. Trust in politicians last year plunged to a 40-year low, according to a study from Australian National University. 
only one quarter of respondents expressed confidence in the government, and four in ten reported they were not satisfied with Australian democracy. A record 23% opted for a minor party at last year's federal election, turning fringe groups such as the far-right One Nation Party into power players for the first time. It's a discontent that, for many, has roots in the economy. The land down under has enjoyed an unprecedented string of growth, but some feel it has not been shed equally. 68% of Australians believe the economy is rigged in favour of the rich and powerful, according to an Ipsos poll carried out earlier this year, and more than 70% say they need a strong leader to take the country back from them. The share of income going to the richest 1% of the population has doubled since the 1980s, but while wages are growing at the lowest levels in 20 years. Home ownership, a key plank of the Australian dream, has plunged to its lowest level since the 1950s. After 26 years of interrupted economic growth, Australians have a lot to be proud and pleased about, says Nicholas Rees, a public policy fellow at the University of Melbourne. That said, stagnant real wage growth and political instability at the national level has fed a growing pessimism in our politicians and the ability of the system to deliver difficult but necessary reform, lamenting the state of economic policy. Sydney Morning Herald political editor Peter Harcher recently complained that politics appeared to have devolved into a parlour game of polls and perceptions. It's a common criticism of the plebe survey, viewed as an odd political farce in a nation whose prosperity has bred a sense of navel-gazing complacency. Indeed, Australia's nickname The Lucky Country was first coined ironically, by the late social critic Donald Horn a scornful comment on the lack of vision among the ruling elite, made possible by the country's many geographical and historical advantages. There is still some truth in that, Mr Rees says. And though many Australians bemoan all the agitation around the marriage vote, it's actually one more confirmation of Mr Horn's lucky theory, or suggests tongue-in-cheek only a lucky country could afford to spend so much time debating the process by which we might begin to consider having a parliamentary vote on Samasik's marriage.